poison ivy. We can all live without it, but unfortunately, if you're in the woods, you need to be prepared to identify it and avoid it. Uh, it takes many forms, and one of the most common ones in cleared areas and on edges of tree lines is the ground growing form. And here we have it. Uh, it looks like a, a small, sort of a, almost a bare stick with just a few leaves that have begun to get their fall color. And uh, so it's leaves of three, let it be. And you can see that these vaguely maple shaped leaves come in clusters of three. If we move up to a tree just a little distance, we'll see another form of it. And this is the form that goes up vertically up the tree trunk. And these yellow leaves uh, on this tree are in fact, again, the leaves of poison ivy. So um, there's a, a third form that, uh, that, comes, that comes when you get a more mature vine growing up a tree where it sends out extremely long limbs uh, and it looks like maybe a, a large shrub, but in fact, it's the same as this. Now, I don't see one handy, but I'll film one if I see one in a minute. This specimen of poison ivy has not yet taken on any fall color, uh, and you can see that it's about 10 to 12 inches tall, has a thin stem, and uh, three clusters or three leaflets of three leaves each. And if we pan up to the tree right behind it, we see that growing up the trunk is the uh, is one of the upright forms or one of the larger forms of poison ivy and I'll try to get a little bit closer and you can see here the leaves of three to the right is a heart shaped leaf that is not poison ivy but it's growing up with the poison ivy and I believe that's probably a, a cat, bar, cat briar or green briar um, one of the smilaxes not toxic but just sort of mixed in with the poison ivy this poison ivy is uh, in a fairly shaded place, so it still has most of its green foliage. It hasn't started changing color yet. Once you identify poison ivy near you, look around. It's a prolific cedar and it reproduces heavily, so usually there will be many of these plants in a small area. And this is a good example of that. This is a small colony of the, the ground growing variety that hasn't yet grown tall enough to go up any of the nearby trees. And you can see all of these little small plants in this area under this tree are poison ivy. Now this tree is an interesting example of a plant that looks a lot like poison ivy and it actually behaves um, in some ways like poison ivy. It has again clusters of three leaves and here at the end of the growing season they're looking a little ratty so it may be tough to get a good example of that. Um, and when I say it behaves like poison ivy I'm referring to the fact that it seeds itself a lot. So you'll see these small seedlings with three leaf clusters uh, all close together, a lot like poison ivy. But this is not poison ivy. This is box elder, Acer nagundo. Um, it's not a real elder, it's actually a maple. Um, and you can tell that it's not poison ivy in several ways. One of the ways is, of course, it's a tree, but very mature poison ivy bushes can, can become shrub-like and look almost like a small box elder. Um, box elders distinguishing characteristic is that the small stems, particularly at the end of branches, are bright green. Here's a good example of those bright green stems on the box elder. Uh, box elder also grows in some of the same places that poison ivy does. It grows at the edge of clearings and on um, the edges of creeks and rivers. And this is a great example of what I like to think of as the third form of poison ivy. You can see that it's growing up the trees and uh, these bright yellow leaves are the fall color again. And if we move in real close, we'll see that uh, it has le leaves of three leaflets each. and it's connected to the uh, the main stem that's climbing up the tree with these root-like suckers clinging on to the tree trunk and if we step back see that the branching of the poison ivy has grown so far out from the trunk of the tree that it appears to be um, probably larger than the tree itself and i think of this as a, a third form because if you're looking for something small you might 
assume that these are actually the limbs of the tree it's growing on. So just keep that in mind. It can, it can be larger than the tree that's supporting it. Here we have another low growing woody shrub with uh, leaflets, uh, leaves of three leaflets. And this is not a terribly common one. Um, it looks a lot like poison ivy. Um, the leaves might be a little bit more serrated than the poison ivy leaves. Um, but the, the telltale sign here is the flower structures, the reproductive structures right up here in the axles in the top of the plant. And uh, they look like miniature cones. This is actually a variety of sumac. And uh, I believe some people might have allerg allergic reactions to some of the sumacs. I'm not sure about this one. I think this one's okay. Very similar in appearance, but not terribly common in a lot of places. And this is a splendid example of a, uh, a plane tree or sycamore that has two vines growing up it. The ones with the bright yellow leaves are the fall colored leaves of poison ivy and the Virginia creeper is the bright red foliage. And I'll see if I can find the stem for the Virginia creeper. And uh, here we go. It looks a great deal like the stem on the poison ivy. The difference with the Virginia creeper during the main part of the growing season when the leaves are green is that this leaflet has this leaf has five leaflets instead of three. This is the wild grapevine that I mentioned earlier. Um, it grows in some of the same ways that poison ivy does. It grows up it grows up tree trunks, um, but as you can see, the leaf is one simple leaf, and it is very different from either that of the Virginia creeper or the poison ivy. Another distinguishing feature of grapevines are the tendrils that come out from uh, the opposite side of the stem from a leaf. So your leaf comes out on this side of the stem and directly opposite we have a tendril and this helps the vine cling to the things around it. And the tendril is basically a modified leaf and it's all curled up. Neither the Parthenocystis virginia creeper nor the poison ivy have tendrils. And here's another little vine that you less commonly see in the woods. This is bittersweet. And I'm not sure if it's the American bittersweet or the introduced Chinese bittersweet. They're very similar to one another and they're both fairly uncommon. Um, and again, it's a vine, it's a woody vine. Um, and you tend to see it growing in the same places where poison ivy grow. And let's follow this stem on down. Lo and behold, there's the red leaves of poison ivy right here within just inches of the area where this bittersweet sprouted. Bittersweet has single elliptical leaves with a little bit of uh, toothing along the edges. So I guess we'd say the margins are serrate. And in the fall it has these beautiful red fruit structures, orange fruit structures that open up a little later. Um, very distinctive. And when I moved to the St. Louis area, I found out that the people here have traditionally collected this and put it up over their mantles or around their doorways during the Christmas season. To another fine specimen of bittersweet. And you can see on this one, actually this is not bittersweet. This is another vining plant, a euonymus. Uh, and you can see the fruits here are uh, have sort of a white exterior and that pops open to reveal uh, red fruits inside. Another non-toxic find. So my dog just managed to wander off the trail into a stand of poison ivy. Great. The leaves are sure beautiful this time of year. He's going to need a ferocious soak down tonight.